hello, welcome to Maria Hamilton. Could you please share your job title again? C certainly, I'm Associate Design Director uh, and I'm in charge of the work. Of Workroom. Um, an absolute treat to be talking to you. We've just had a bit of time to play on the alpha. Um, we've seen the presentation that's going to go with releasing that. We have huge questions and, and what we really want to talk to you about today is uh, the narrative of the war within and of the world soul saga as well because you're approaching this expansion dude okay so jay as soon as they become available we have to apply for press passes because i have everything i have i have all of it i have everything i have everything i've got microphones i've got i've got two 4k mirrorless cameras bro i've got we, I have all the equipment. I have it all. I have it all. Like I've got a go GoPro. I've got, I've got, I've got everything. Like we, we have to, we have to find a way. Like there's, it's been too, you guys know, I have to, I have to tell you guys something. And I think a lot of people wouldn't know this. I've gotten a media pass before. I've gotten a media pass before, but I was like 19 years old and I didn't really know what I was doing. And, and I was supposed to sign up to do interviews, but I, but I never did. I just didn't, I couldn't comprehend it. You know, you know what I mean? I was excited to go to BlizzCon and I just couldn't comprehend really like what I was supposed to do. And so I hope that that didn't like ruin future opportunities because I still took pictures and like did all sorts of me like media stuff, but I didn't get to do that part. And so what, I guess what I'm saying is that if it's happened before, it can happen again. It can ha it can happen again. So, so yeah. So that's my hope is that like maybe we can get one because I I would uh, I would love to do this. I would love to fucking I would love to do this, man. You would ask too good of questions that they wouldn't know how to respond. I don't think that's true. A bit unlike any other expansion that you've ever done, I guess, when you've got this whole arc of three expansions <laughs> in mind. Uh, how does that change how you approach? It's a good question. For... This is a good question. Very general, good, good starter question. I think um, we'll get back to this. Um, I uh, I want to interview Holly for midnight. No, no. I think I think um, I would have clever questions, but not questions that seek to undermine the impact of the narrative that they're trying to tell. So, like I've said before, I would ask questions that hint at thematic things and maybe smaller stuff, you know, you don't, you don't, that's why the questions in the title, they're not, they probably won't actually ask these questions, but it's like, these are the kinds of questions that people like expect you to ask. Like what kind of, you can't ask direct questions like this. It's like, it's like, it's like interrogating someone for a crime and just like sitting them down and being like, so did you kill him? <laughs> it's like, so like, is Sar so is Sargeras the bad guy? Like you, what do you expect them to say to that? Like, they're not gonna, <laughs> it's, it's such a loaded question that you only can really answer it a certain way. You know what I mean? So it's like, you can't, you can't do that. But for one particular expansion. Well, we, when we, when we sat down to think about what we wanted the World Soul Saga to be, uh, we realized we had a very large story to tell. And we had a lot of pieces that we wanted to pull in from previous expansions. Things we had set up, Giant Sword, for example. Uh, and the more we looked at it, the more we thought, you know, we can probably tell this story best if we do it as a trilogy and we figure out what the individual expansions will be so that you have a satisfying arc within that individual expansion, but we also have this overarching arc. So we have this arc that goes over the entire uh, World Source Saga. So that was new for us and it meant that we could actually sit down and figure out pacing, um, foreshadowing, things like that that have been a little trickier in the past and how we could use our prologues before our patches to help us remind players uh, introduce characters that they may not recall yes reminding is a big thing final fantasy 14 does that very well um it's actually not uncommon at all for you to come across a character that you actually did interact with previously and for their reintroduction like so you'll interact with a character and then they'll kind of be off doing their own thing and then when they bring the character back in they remind you of your previous exploits with that character. Or they will remind you with a brief history of why that character matters or whatever, right? And I think like WoW could really use that. WoW 
has a lot of characters that people might not be that familiar with if they haven't played through all the expansions. And so I just think that when if you're going to have a, an expansion level narrative arc being told, that if you're going to bring Illyria Windrunner back into it to tell that, you need to have a, a reminder of who is Illyria Windrunner. Why is she a Void Elf? You know, what? why is she important? Like that stuff is very important because if you don't, that's how you end up getting into a game. And this is a very big problem with WoW. Where you load in, you might be a brand new player, you go to start the expansion and they just start referencing characters and events. The second war, was it the second war or was it the third war? Meanwhile, a play, person playing through BFA for the first time is going to be like, uh, wh what? Like, <laughs> What war are we in now? <laughs> like, what, what what is this? Like, so I think I I really would love to see more of that, where characters are properly reintroduced and in a way that a new player can also identify with and learn to appreciate that character without having to have experienced all of their previous story. It's so important. Otherwise, you end up with characters that players feel disconnected from and they don't really get. And she died. Okay, like. Okay, so I think that's such an important thing, and I really hope that the World Soul Saga really hammers on that, because it's easy to forget, okay? Let's just be honest. Time is the enemy of memory, and the more time that passes, the harder things become to remember, and 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 your memories start to, to blend, and they start to warp, and things aren't aren't what you remember them as. You start to play a game of telephone in your own head, and so... I think it's just important that that we are reminded of those things because you're it's just not fair or reasonable to expect people to remember. It's it's just far too much. It's far too much. All and so forth. So uh, it's actually very exciting uh, for us, and we're very we're very busy trying yeah, to do some, them all simultaneously. Some of which are characters you haven't seen in six to eight years, bro. Yeah, yeah, and that's. When people come to the stream and they're like, oh, Pyro, have you seen or heard this and this? And sometimes I get like a little fl frustrated because I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to talk about this again. But then I have to remember that like, I can't remember all this shit. Why would I expect anyone else to be able to remember all this shit? What the fuck? It's like what I do. It's like my job. And so if I can't fucking do it, why would I, why, you know, it's just, it's an unrealistic expectation. And so they as the company, they have to understand that too um, and be able to tell a story with that in, in, in mind. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really exciting for us as players as well because, uh, yeah, like, like you say, we have never been able to look ahead several expansions at a time. It's True, always been it's a the first. It's a great surprise. And, well, I'm sure there'll be... Well, besides Shadowlands, we kind of knew about that one, but that was a little different, I suppose. Plenty of uh, surprises waiting for us. Do you think the, the, the World of Warcraft community is ready to, uh, to follow a story for six years, right? I, I think that we will have a story in each expansion that is, um, you know, engaging and entertaining and is, is, is giving you a part of the story, setting up certain elements that will resolve later, uh, as well as the story that spans a longer period of time. And so is this in a way how people kind of liken their storytelling to like Marvel? Because like in my brain, I guess, as she's describing us, I'm thinking like, okay, we're talking like Infinity War and Endgame. Like, like a series of, in like the other Marvel movies where like little things are set up here and there. And then like the grand narrative is being told as well. I don't know if that's like just a normal mode of storytelling or if that's like something that appears more in like Marvel. But I guess in my brain, I just when I'm thinking of like common media, that's like where my mind goes to a de to a degree. You know what's funny? That microphone that they have on that stand, bro. I th that looks a lot like my microphone. It could be the same one. Even. Anyway, when I was growing up, you used to call this idea a trilogy. Not sure why it's linked to Marvel these days, because it's a modern media form that people can liken it to. Because it's probably the most gigantic television-based media story universe ever. I would think that's probably why. Like, I understand the concept of a trilogy. I was I was more asking a question, not really making a statement. Marvel was many people's first introduction to a shared world that goes past a trilogy. I think that's pretty common when it's something the artist had has long a long format, like um 
George R. R. Martin, Tolkien, that type of stuff. Chronicle of Ice and Fire from, yeah, okay. Really happy they went the Marvel route with Lord of the Rings trilogy. Are you being a fucking smartass? I'm asking you a gen genuine question. Marvel's done some of the best setup interlinking of their movies in recent times, which, which is made to be a whole saga way bigger than a trilogy of books. Uh, we are planning to, you know, provide these uh, expansions a little faster than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't swear to six years if, if you asked me. Uh, it might be quicker than that. Mm -hmm. Okay, because Evatel said six to eight years. So if Maria's saying, this is, this is also what I kept saying when they announced these three expansions. People were saying, oh, it's going to be fucking forever until this is done. And I'm saying like, no, no, it isn't. If they're delivering the expansions faster and the gaps between the expansions are, are less, then it's not going to take as much time. Like, this is simple math, Guardian. Like, it's not that fucking complicated. Like, they're trying to tell probably the whole Saga series in four to five years. Like, at the most, in my opinion. But that's okay as long as you're focused and you have direction. It's fine, as long as you're focused and have direction. If you're kind of blindly throwing ideas at the wall and seeing what stick, sticks, yeah, you're, you might have some problems. But when you have direction and good leadership, you can make this work. Um, but, uh, you know, the hope is that by, by uh, building it as a trilogy, we have people looking forward to the next installment. Right. And Not because just, we're working on all of them. And it's so smart. And it's so smart. And what she just said is so important. We have, they're looking forward to the next installment. You guys have said, and I've seen this so many times, that many people are even more excited for Midnight than they are for the, for the War Within. That's the point. <laughs> like, yeah, that's part of the point. Like, The War Within is still going to fuck. Like, I think it's still going to be awesome. We're still going to get awesome storytelling. I think it's still going to be surprising and probably blow our minds to a degree. But the idea is still, yes, Midnight is next. And then for people like me, you get a fucking expansion called The Last Titan. Dude. And you have, you have Chris Metzen come on the stage and say that there's a Titan conspiracy about the true nature of Azeroth and their intentions for Azeroth. And I'm sitting here like, hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello, I see you. <laughs> you know, like, how do you, how do you not get excited about that? Like the idea that, that midnight somehow ruins the hype for the war within is like, for me, it's not true. Like, no dude. I want to see what happens in the War Within because I know that it's going to set up what happens at midnight and what happens in the last Titan. Like, uh, the whole thing. The whole thing. Like, and the thing is, you know about the trilogy. So if you come back and you do, like, the, the War Within and you're like, ah, oh, this story's not for me or whatever, it's not, like, the best, then maybe since you know midnight, midnight is coming, you still, you're like, but, 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 if Zalatath whips it out, I'ma suck it. You know what I'm saying? So you never know. Right now. You know, we're different stages of, of all of them. Um, we, we're pretty sure we can get the pacing right, you know, so that you feel that, oh, oh, hmm, okay. Oh, we're building again, you know, and, and, and have those moments. Um, so, yes, I, we, we, that's what we're aiming for. And That's a good idea. Instead of just having a little bit of dicking around, dicking around, dicking around, and then whomp, at the end of the expansion, oh, there's the threat. Oh, there's the exponentially dangerous threat right at the end of the fucking expansion. Like, no, how about we do a little bit of this? How about we do a little bit of this? How about we do a little bit of that? And then we do that. You know what I mean? We don't need to have a fucking... <laughs> like, like the jailer, okay? Let's not do that. Uh, to be honest, Chris has got some really great visionary stuff in mind. Um, we work with uh, Chris a lot, uh, all the time, really. Um, and it's wonderful to have him kind of holding the overall vision as we figure out the details and how we're gonna build it and uh, how we're gonna make it fun for players. Wow, so she basically just says what I've said to you guys before, that WoW's storytelling is like the light and void. Chris is the light, where he sees the end point, he sees like 
some of the main lines being drawn. He has the scope, but then the storytellers and like the smaller, like the lower levels, they're like the void. We're like, they're all the different paths for how we get there. And like this story will go this way and this story will go this way, but they're still converging to the thing. But that thing might not know exactly how those paths form and together they come together and come. Anyway. Are there any um, challenges that you didn't expect that have cropped up in, in sort of approaching a trilogy like this? Uh, no, I think the biggest challenge always is continuity. So yeah. we expected that. What's wrong with you, chat? When we build any expansion, we see, uh, because we assign people to work on zones, you know, and the zone stories, uh, we always see dips uh, when we transition between them. We want to make sure that that's a more consistent thing, and so we keep an eye on it. With whole expansions, you know, we expect certain elements of uh, continuity, you know, to be challenging as well, and communication. Communication is very hard, surprisingly hard. It's one of the most difficult things to do in games is make sure... <laughs> Imagine. But because, again, we're working on all of them at once, we're, we're, I have a lot of meetings, lots of, it lots of meetings I'm sure it doesn't mean sure anything. we're all talking to each other. And what we're setting up in the War Within can pay off in the appropriate place. Without going into details, the kind of thing that crops up in my mind must be if a plan changes, if something changes in... in uh, oh, that's a dope sweatshirt that he's wearing, by the way. I only just realized that's a Zalatath sweatshirt. That's fucking fire, dude. Where did he get that? Where the fuck did he get that? Within, you have to go to people who are working on Midnight and go, I, I, you can't do that anymore. I'm really sorry because of this thing we just mm. changed. Has that has that happened at all at any point? Or? Got it it has happened a little That's bit, rad. but it's less. That's cool. Uh, it's be because. So are they going to do this in, in in America too? Like for right now, um, for Last Titan, uh, we we have the art team going nuts. Like 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 we're getting just phenomenal concept art and phenomenal uh, attempts worry. to understand what, what these environments need to look like and what these creatures need to look like. And then that group is very busy with that, but they're sharing that out with the rest of us. And then uh, for, for Midnight right now, the world builders and world artists are very hard at work there, building out maps, getting that ready for people to roll in, start spawning creatures, start building quests. So they're busy working on that. And we want to make sure they're building spaces we can use you know, that, that, that go along with our story. And sometimes we're like, ooh, we changed our mind. We, you know, where we said we wanted the thing. Well, we want a different thing. Is that okay? And generally- Getting ahead of coincidences equals wizards IRL. <laughs> speaking, it's possible. A wizard is never early nor late. He or always arrives precisely when he means to. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's like, oh, okay, we'll use that thing then. Um, and then of course with the war within, we're, we're finishing things up so we can get it ready and get it out there to you. Um, yeah. I know the answer to this question, but I just love asking it for people in- Thanks, Dumbledore. Ban him. See that guy, Vet Vepsy? Ban him. Get him out of here! Your position and, and similar positions. Do you know the ending of the World Soul Saga right now? I do. <laughs> See, it's just very Did you hear that? Moment. Do you know the ending of the World Soul Saga? She just flat out says, I do. The answer to this question, but I just love asking it for people in your position and, and similar positions. Do you know the ending of the World Soul Saga right now? I do. See, it's just very exciting. I love that. In, in some past expansions or, or patches even, it hasn't always felt like that's been an answer there. So mm -hmm. that's just, it's something that I know how players love to hear. <laughs> we, we know, we know where we're starting. Yeah. We know what stakes we want to set up, and we know where we're ending, and we know what the outcome is. We, we know what that is, and that's very clear. We have a backbone already uh, established. Good, good, good. You know what that means? You know what that means, chat? You know what that means? We cook, we cook. Those who watch me play FF14 know what I can do with that. You know what I can do with the well thought out, and fucking plan storyline. I can predict the whole fucking thing, dude. I can predict the whole fucking thing. You just have to put the pieces where they need to go. I swear to God, give me the chance. We, uh, we will eat good. If they actually put the pieces where they're supposed to go and they have an idea, I will figure it out. It will not get past me. There's no chance. There's no chance. This is, this is what I do.
I can't wait, dude. Fuck, I can't wait. You know, these are moments that are very important that are going to help drive the story, going to help introduce new uh, enemies and new friends. It's going to be good, These are ones where we're going to conclude those arcs. So we're we're plotting it out very carefully. Um, And I already know some of, like, I mean, we, we, we all know certain whispers have already been alluding to some of these events that we know are going to happen. We've been hinted at for a while, so if you know where to look, then you won't be completely blind to what is coming. Uh, and the, the, the fact that what we speculated about um, Crassus Folly, or Carsus Folly, or whatever, and, now, and then we learn about Dalaran, I mean... It, uh, like I said, like Skiz and I have said before, it just further solidifies that what we believe about Zalatath is probably true. And what we perceive about the Weave and about Elune might be true. And uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Um, and like I said, we have the luxury of getting the pacing. A lot of uh, our questions changed I'm today. Uh, once mm. we got onto the alpha yeah. and saw uh, some very bold storytelling choices or narrative choices that have been made right at the very beginning of the war. So this one is the spoiler section, okay? So if you don't want anything from alpha, you might not want to watch this part. I'm going to listen to it. Like I said, my mods have already watched it, vetted it for me, and they believe that the spoilers are not that big of a deal. Um, so we're going to find out, so just be prepared. This is technically the spoiler section. So yeah, just be aware. Uh, Peter Bundy, 84, thanks for the three month resub, by the way, dude, appreciate that. Dude, Steve, <laughs> for three months as well, dude. I really appreciate all the, all the resubs, guys. Thanks so much for the support. Um, yeah, thank you. Within. Um, by now, when people are watching this, it will be mm. common knowledge that Dalaran has apparently been destroyed. Khadgar is not looking great for him on the alpha at the moment of uh, what we've been able to play. So were you trying to make a statement? I'm glad that he keeps it vague like that. I am going to say I appreciate Taliesin for that um, because I don't... Let's say I'm not surprised that Khadgar, as an archmage, is related to what happens with Dalaran considering in Forgotten Realms those floating cities are run by archmages. And when the weave breaks, they fall out of the fucking sky. So, um, like I said, not exactly a mystery to me that Dalaran would fall or something would happen to it. We'll have to understand why that occurs. Um, and if that is the result of Illyria Windrunner and another entity, then that would be very interesting. Um, because they have already said that there would be some sort of, um, rivalry between Zalatath and Illyria. And I would assume that that rivalry probably is going to align with whoever fulfills the whisper at the hour of her third death she ushers in our coming. Um, the true harbinger of the Void. And it could be that Illyria is trying to stop that from happening through her connection with the Void and understanding it, trying to stop Zalatath from doing it. Ironically though, as Locust Walker pointed out, Illyria has a unique destiny. And it may turn out that she unwittingly falls directly into the trap that Zalatath is probably laying for her. So we'll have to see. But it would be int I'm not sure what causes Dalaran's destruction, but just operating on the lines of D&D, &D, we already have some themes that we're following. So I think that's pretty cool. Khadgar's uncertain fate is literally the only thing I'd consider a spoiler you didn't already know in this video. Yeah, I'd like to know. Yeah, I don't know what that I don't know what that means. Do you think Karazan could play a part in anything in the World Soul Saga? I mean, I think Medivh is still relevant. I think the the fact that Medivh is the character in the game most directly associated with Ravens is probably not a mistake. You know, the Lord of Ravens will turn the key. Um, but you know, I, I think that Medivh is still relevant, and Medivh clearly has a connection with Khadgar. So, um, we'll see if Medivh plays any role in this. I would love for him to, considering that at the end of Legion, we saw his, him or whatever, turn into a raven and fly off into the Twisting Nether, <laughs> which was kind of wild. Um, yeah, Medivh has also been a vessel for Sargeras in the past. <laughs> uh, so lo lots of connective, connective tissue, so to speak. Statement at the beginning of the, the World Soul Saga by doing that. That players understand the risk 
uh, they want to understand who the enemies are and why we are pursuing them. Yeah. Um, the introduction, which you won't be able to play until we launch, is going to provide a lot more detail around what has happened uh, there. Uh, but because of where we start and because we wanted to get feedback, it was going to be very obvious <laughs> that something has gone horribly awry. Um, so we were really looking forward to seeing people's comments and what people speculate uh, has occurred. But um, yes, uh, we wanted to come Can you hear that again? Has, is going to provide a lot more detail around what has happened uh, there. Uh, but because of where we start and because we wanted to get feedback, it was going to be very obvious that something <laughs> has gone horribly awry. Um, so we were really looking forward to seeing people's comments and what people speculate uh, has occurred. But um, yes, uh, we wanted to come out of the gate swinging. So we did. That was, uh, and that is going to be. What did she just say? Seeing people's comments and what people speculate uh, has occurred, but. Am I understanding that sentence correctly? Horribly awry. Um, so we were really looking forward to seeing people's comments and what people speculate uh, has occurred, but. Um, yes, uh, we wanted to come out of the gate swinging, so we did. That was, uh, and that is going to be the intro rather than the pre-patch that kind of the sets intro. that up. It's kind of impossible when you see a beloved player hub be affected like that, mm -hmm. not to think of Teldrassil and the way that BFA started, and not to be reminded of some of the controversy that that caused. And I mean, I didn't think about that actually at all even for a second. And maybe I'm unique in that regard, but I... The Dalaran thing does not make me think about Teldrassil at all. It's like not... At least how it's how I understand it so far, it's like not even remotely similar. It's more like Broken Shore, which is much better. I thought Legion, not Teldrassil and that still exists in the community today, I think. Was that in your mind when you were planning this and how is it different? Oh yes, I mean, we had lengthy conversations about how this wasn't the same, how this uh, was not sort of one race uh, taking, the, taking the hit here, uh, how players would likely react to having this wonderful sort of neutral uh, place that we have where we can, we can go and meet each other and, um, and you know, hang out. Um, we talked a lot about it and what the risks were there, and we think that it uh, ultimately is worth it. Uh, it's, a, it's a place that everyone can feel lost for simultaneously, because uh, we all lose when Dalaran goes down. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was intentional. When Dalaran goes down. So, I mean, yeah, she kind of she says it. Uh, it was calculated, uh, and uh, we, do, we do not want to repeat, you know, the feelings that happened with um, Teldrassil. So... Yeah, we talked about it a lot. And are those kind of stakes something we should expect from the rest of the saga and from uh, War Within? Oh, yes. Like anything can happen sort of thing. I, I think you should feel anything can happen. Because <laughs> anything can happen. Awesome. Um, I, I've got, uh, this is a very strange question. I am a huge fan of Zalatath being a Shadow Priest uh, and it's given me such immense pleasure to see her being put in a more kind of uh, uh, central position in the story. I really wanted to get as much out of the Zalatath story and her influence on the story as possible. Should I be playing Season of Discovery? Hmm. I'm not sure, actually. Hmm. I think we will be making sure that other people understand who she is. Uh, Shadow Priests have a bit of an advantage in having had a certain relationship there already. Um, but that's not core to what's happening, so I don't know that it's critical. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's, um, you know, she's, she's up to something, mm -hmm. and it's very definite what, what you know, there's, there's something going on there, but it's not altogether clear what. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the, the mystery of what her involvement is and really who she's serving, is she serving herself or she's serving someone else? And, um, you know, the hope is that any player joining up will be okay without having had that background. It's actually kind of a philosophy that we're pursuing, which is that you don't need to go do other things or play other things or read other things. You just need to play this game and this expansion to understand what's going on. That's, That's good. really good to know. Having said that, 
I am a priest player, and I do also from BFA have the Eye of Nazoth. So I, I'm in a situation where I have the Blade of the Black Empire in my, in my bags, and when I'm in an Azeroth, the Eye still shows up and, and, and whispers when you go into certain zones and things. Again, thinking back to BFA, where you had the, the choice to join uh, Sylvanas or Sourfang, is that something that you could take inspiration for when it comes to Zalatath and her interactions with people who, you know, do feel, obviously she's a baddie, but that's kind of why we like her, right? Um, an affinity to her as a character. And is she a baddie? Well, I, I, I mean, not bad? obviously not. She's my lady. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh my God. God. She, she is an absolute baddie. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, you know, it, could there be um, a, a player choice, for want of a better word, element to, to have. He wants this payoff for this eye thing so fucking bad, dude. It's one of the worst things they ever did. Uh, hopefully she gives him a good answer here because this shit has been going on for too fucking long, dude. This fucking Eye of Nazoth bullshit. This fucking, it's the same thing with the Sylvanas loyalist shit. Just like, it didn't fucking go anywhere, dude. Just didn't go anywhere. Let it go. How we approach uh, Zalatath? I mean, I think it throughout the course of the War Within, um, you'll have an opportunity to learn a bit more about her motives, maybe. Um, if you're paying really close attention, you might get some foreshadowing as well. Um, I mean, we're gonna get that. But, uh, you know, a choice whether to help her or not help her, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that actually matters, mm. in a way. Mm. Are, there, are there other instances? A choice to help her or not help her. I don't know that that matters. Are there, are there other, can we look forward to other instances of that in the game? I mean, um, back with uh, choosing to be a Sylvanas loyalist or not. It was really nice to have kind of player agency in that, in that way. Is that something? It wasn't really nice. All right, I'm gonna say it, Evatel, it wasn't really nice. It wasn't real. There was no real agency. It didn't change anything. It, it was a failed attempt at player agency that did nothing but make people feel bad. It just made all of us feel bad because the people that made one decision never got a payoff and the people that made the other decision never got a payoff. So, the loyalist thing really, You felt, and, and then I, I felt like a fucking dumbass because I was a loyalist. And then we got Shadowlands. And then I felt, I felt like a fool because I thought she was cool and had like a plan. Oh, she's actually secretly serving Sargeras. What was I thinking? Everyone serves Sargeras in Pyromancer's brain. We can look forward to. Yeah, we like we like to do that. Um, you know, we, I I'm a big RPG Fuck. player, and I love provi providing choice. I like choice. I like choice that pays off. I like, um, you know, your your story has changed somewhat. Uh, obviously, in a shared world, it's a little harder than a single player RPG mm. to to really pay that off. Um, and there's always the risk that you've diverged so far. Now it's very hard to get everybody back to the same place and continue paying it off. Because mm. I think there's a commitment. If we give you a choice and we say, you know, you're going to get some special. Yeah, that's the problem. There was no commitment last time. There, there was and from either like you ask the player to commit, but then they don't get anything. There's no, there's no payoff. There, there wasn't really. That's why it like didn't land because it wasn't. It wasn't, the whole thing wasn't there. Little content that goes along with that choice. We need to carry it all the way through the saga. Mm -hmm. So it's something we think about pretty seriously if we're going to do it, but I wouldn't say we're not going to do it either. Excitement towards the Earthen uh, as, as an allied race, and as a race, maybe hasn't reached the peaks that it does with maybe some other new races and, and what have you that are introduced. I yeah, I mean, it's also because we have dwarves and we have, we have, Dark Iron Dwarves, or whatever they're called. Um, you know, you already have two two dwarves, right? It's like it's like adding another faction of humans and calling them the Arathi. It's like, okay, okay but but they're humans, <laughs> and then there's Kul Tirans, and then now there's the Arathi. Like, what really is this? Like, these should just be different. They should be like sub-races, you know what I mean? Like, what, what are we... If you're gonna... I don't know, I don't know. I'm of the... 
Part of the reason is because they have factions still, which is part of what makes this game... They need to get rid of that. I just, they just need to get rid of it. Like, they need to get rid of it. Like, the fact that you can't, as an individual, be a Lightforge Drenai and still be a part of the Horde, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I get it to a degree, but, like, this artificial limitation of, like, only being able to play certain races on certain on the certain faction is fucking lame. And... It's honestly why they have these, they have them categorized separately and why Dark Iron is, and like, it's just, it's like, it's like why we have Blood Elves, right? It's like, if you're going to try to give both sides a thing, but like, when you start to blend them together so much, like they just become the same thing. So it's like why at this point, if we're going to run the Horde on a council and we're going to run the Alliance on a council, why don't we just make one big council and just work together then? Like, why aren't we just doing that? Like... If we're not going to have a war chief, then what are we doing? You know what I mean? Like, what? Th what's the, the point? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I they're, they're, they are made of stone, and there are some very specific sorts of things that are related to being made of stone that make them quite different. Right. Like free will? Oh, how ironic that Maria would talk about it right as we have to have a discussion with my chat about it. What is it that stone men typically don't have in World of Warcraft? Oh, that's right. Free will. Oh, that's right. Right. Like how the hints about Kazogar and the Sector have told us that even though these earthen are physiologically separate from all the other earthen, how they've somehow gained traits that those affected by the curse of flesh have, i.e. <gasps> free will. <gasps> Whoa! What a crazy concept! Whoa! Um... I'm really excited about the, there's like a, I don't know what it's going to be called, but there's a, there's a surge ability uh, that draws upon your favorite Azurite, um, and, and you can have this Azurite surge, and I think it's really cool. I, I think it's a Azurite. really cool racial. Um, I... Their racial ability is Azurite surge? <laughs> oh boy. Azeroth, the expression of free will. Oh my god, dude. Oh man. The Earthen's racial ability is an Azerite ability. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait for people to eat their fucking words like lunch, dude. I can't I wait. I like it. I like it's the be story sick. as well, uh, for those that are role players. Um, because you have the three different groups it's gonna be and sick. different perspectives. On Some motherfuckers are going to be having a full course... Five course meal. All the fucking words they're gonna have to eat. I can't wait. And so you have opportunity to role play pretty, pr pretty. Maybe early. even me. I might have a little. I might have a little dinner myself. <laughs> if you Let's not to. get ahead of ourselves. I might be having a nice meal myself too, depending on the way that this goes. In that area, and as you go through the I might campaign be and eating as a lot you of food. unlock a lot of the words. allied um, race. You'll learn about each of those specific ones and maybe feel an area. And as Let me hear because this again. you have the three different groups and different perspectives, sorry, a chat. surge ability uh, that draws upon your favorite Azurite, um, and and you can have this Azurite surge. And I think it's really cool. I, I think it's a really cool racial. Um, I I quite like it. I like the story as well uh, for those that are role players, um, because you have the three different groups and different. Did you hear what she just said? That kind of hurts me deep in my soul, dude. I hope there's not a perception internally that that mostly only role players care about the story, bro. What the fuck? I don't role play and I love the fucking story. What is this? Different perspectives on things. I mean, look, good for the role players, but like, hey, we're, uh, there's some of us out here too. <laughs> we don't, it's not just role players that like the story of like the allied races. I, I... Or maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it really is. Do you have opportunity to role play pretty, pr pretty nerdily, if you want to, in that area? And as you go through the campaign, three different factions. She said, by the way. So you have like the Void, the Scarden, you have the the Earthen, and then you have whatever the third one is, which I don't know what that is. But and as you unlock the Allied um, race, you'll learn about each of those specific ones and maybe feel an affinity for one of them or for none of them and be a new kind of Earthen to go out and explore the world, so. And last question, because I know. Wait, is she, is, is she suggesting, wait, didn't I do something similar? Didn't I do something where there was like a, oh, the orcs. Yeah, 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 where, where with the orcs, I could pick what clan I wanted to be a part of. It's kind of what it sounds like she's saying that like this Earthen, 
you maybe you get to you know you like pseudo kind of align with one of them or whatever and it doesn't probably make like a significant choice permanently but um that'd be kind of interesting to like have that role playing aspect to it of like you kind of get to pick which one and the dialogue changes depending on what you choose or whatever whatever i could i like that in the in the orc heritage quest line i thought it was really good i thought the orc heritage quest line was was fantastic actually it was really long it was longer than i thought and last question because i know we're running out of time the ending of the last raid in Dragon maybe there were di are different types of azurite surge or whatever and you and you ch i don't know dude maybe your alignment with i don't know i don't know in flight uh, where the um, uh, dragon flights are, are empowered. That sounds like free will, Earthen. Yes, that's, that's what's happened. Did they break? Curse of Flesh activated halfway? No. They've been exposed to an anomaly that is Azerite energy. It's, it's what I've been saying and I'll continue to say. The anomaly that they found was probably a leak in probably one of the imprisonment mechanisms that they were probably supposed to look over for the titans and the exposure to the energy coming out of said leak has given them free will i'm like pretty sure that's what's happened so it's it's another narrative device to help you understand the nature of azeroth of her divine nature and of free will lubridium there seem to be a Luda Bruum, sorry thank you so much for the gifting a sub to crow skyler Appreciate that. Thank you. And Azerite is an expression, I think, of that to a degree. Creation and destruction and the free will associated with it. I think we often very... I think we misunderstand the curse of flesh, personally. I don't think we've... Maybe we, maybe we don't, but I don't think we fully understand... Like, we associate the curse of flesh with the, vo with the void, which I don't think is the correct association. So when it comes to free will <clears throat> and mortality... Um... If Azerite can give free will, and then an alleged curse of flesh can give free will, Azerite on the side of light, life, creation, rhythm, and structure, and Argus or whatever, I guess I maybe have it backwards, on the other side of unmaking, darkness, death, flesh, mortality, like, I, I can see a big Ouroboros symbol where Argus is in one half and Azeroth is in the other, and they make a supreme deity together but each one handles a half of the cosmological spectrum, which then breaks into more aspects and becomes diluted as time goes on. But at the core, those primary beings I still think are there, and the power which they hold, I think, has to correlate with the flow of souls and the cosmos. And in addition to that, free will, and as such, flesh. Like, it's it all links together. The, but what we're led to believe about where flesh comes from is probably a misunderstanding from the Titans. And it's probably it's probably in, incorrectly associated with the power of the Void when it shouldn't be. Strong implication that it wasn't the power of a Titan that was empowering them and Dragon flights up. Hold on. And last question, because I know we're running out of time. The ending of the last raid in Dragonflight uh, where the um, uh, dragon flights are, are empowered by Azeroth, there seemed to be a very strong implication that it wasn't the power of a titan that was empowering them. And Well, I mean, that's not even an Im implication. It's outright stated. I mean, it is outright stated that it is not Azeroth. It's not even, it's not even implied. I mean, it's, it's definitely confirmed. And there's been a lot of speculation in the community as to whether the game was telling us that perhaps Azeroth, Azeroth isn't a titan or not. Is there a clarification that you can give us there, or is that purposely vague? I cannot tell you that. Shocker. I, I mean, there it is. I mean... <laughs> there it is. There it is, dude. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I mean, that's actually a really... What a revelation! Good way that's to a, end. That's a great way to uh, end. Thank you. This has been a, like a really lovely interview. Thank you for it actually was really uh, good. just giving such thoughtful answers. Yeah. And uh, it's a, a pleasure to talk to you about yeah, it. And thank you. thank you for looking after kind of the world of World of Warcraft. It's so, uh, I guess, reassuring to know that obviously there are people doing it, but that someone has kind of a holistic view of the story of the world, which is it. Azeroth is not a Titan confirmed. <laughs> it can have two meanings. It can go both ways. It can mean that either Azeroth isn't a Titan or what we call the Titans are not Titans. 
Titan is just, it's again, it's, it's like a, it's just a nomenclature. It's just like eternal. It's just a fucking title. So it's a, it's who has what titles, who is holding what titles and what does that imply about them, right? It's not necessarily that Azeroth isn't a Titan. It could be that the other things are not Titans. Again, the final expansion is called The Last Titan. So what I've said before is that I would assume that it would, it would, benefit the Titans to have us believe that Azeroth is a Titan because then we associate the benevolence and the powers of Azeroth and what she represents with the Titans, which is not correct, more than likely. It, it, it's wildly beneficial for them to have us believe that.